Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about two really, really important things on your blues journey here, which is touch and tone. And these things can make a huge difference in the outcome uh, or success of whatever it is that you're trying to play. Now, obviously, this works in any style of music, but we're going to be gearing our discussion toward blues. Okay, so what I want you to be thinking about here is that if I was to, if I was trying to, let's say I was trying to play uh, more of a mellow blues thing, right? And I'm plugged into uh, a Mesa Boogie and I've got my gain all the way up, or I'm plugged into a 5150 and I've got my gain dimed. I've got it all the way up. Obviously, I'm setting myself up for failure because the tone that I'm going to get is not really appropriate for the situation that I'm finding myself in. And so I have to, I have to be aware of that, right? Now, again, my job isn't to tell you that you should own this amp or don't own this amp or own seven of these amps. It's not that. I've always been a very simple person in terms of having a lot of amps and all that sort of thing. It, I, I've played, you know, I played a, a Line 6 Bogner tube amp for 15 years on stage, and it sounded great, and I got all kinds of tones out of it. And so for me, it isn't, it isn't the brand so much. I mean, as guitar players, obviously we love to buy gear, right? But it isn't about that. It's about dialing in the right thing for the situation that you find yourself in. So in this blues course, I'm using this uh, Silver Sky and I'm using the single coils, okay? Now, if I was, generally you've seen me use like Ibanez stuff that has humbuckers and things like that. And again, none of that makes a difference to me. Um, as long as the guitar itself is comfortable, I can adjust it. I can adjust the tone and the touch to basically kind of mold around the situation I find myself in. So let's start off by talking about tone. Now, again, if I was trying to dial something in, what I like to do is, is what I call stacking. Basically what I do is I try and create a guitar tone with the amp, that whatever amp you've got. Basically what I try and do is unless it's one of, of two extremes, unless it's absolutely clean, you know, I need something that has no distortion whatsoever, or it's absolutely heavy. It's got to be, you know, for the metal stuff I play and things like that. If it's not one of those two things, it's just in the center here. And what I do is I build a tone by stacking. So right now what I, I've got here is just a, a basic general kind of sound, and I'm going to put my toggle switch in the bridge position, okay? And then we'll start there. So as I play, and you can hear I've got a, a nominal amount of distortion on there. Now, again, it's nothing outrageous. It's just a rock and roll kind of distortion. Okay, so if I was to take that distortion and just work with that right now. Again, I, I, you know, just so you know, you know, I tend to run my lows, mids, and highs pretty much at center, dead center. Um, I'll run my highs maybe a little bit more, and then my mids will run about 70, 75%. I tend to run my mids pretty hot. The bass just stays at center. You know, for me, the, 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 the low rumble of the bass just tends to get in the way with um, you know, playing live and things like that. So I tend to just think of running everything at 50%. If you've got an amplifier that you have to completely tweak your EQ, it's possible that that's not the right amp for you. Or you need to think a little bit more about how you're setting it up. But that's kind of where I start. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the delay and the reverb off. So now I just have a plain old <laughs> signal right there. <laughs> Just rock and roll. Okay, so now being in that bridge position, uh, which is the, the brightest of the, the pickups that I have, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a little bit of touch. And what I'm going to do is turn my volume all the way up. My tone is all the way up. Okay, my volumes are all the way up. Okay, volume tone's up. Volume off. Volume all the way up. Okay. 
Now that sounds pretty good for a nice edgy kind of thing that I might be doing. Kind of thing, right? But now watch, what I'm gonna do is instead of picking so hard, I'm gonna lay back on my guitar pick. Okay, now you're gonna notice I'm getting a little bit of noise because these are single coil pickups, right? Um, but that's just natural, that just kind of happens. But what I like to do then, is this is where the dynamics of the guitar itself come in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll back my volume. And look at that. So I went from this rock and roll kind of... So now I can use the dynamic of picking harder and softer, but because I've rolled that volume back, all of a sudden it clean th cleans things up. So a volume doesn't act like a volume on a stereo, right? The volume on a guitar is almost like um, a filter. So when it's open, it's, it's completely open when I'm on 10. And when I roll it back, some of that distortion is filtered out. Some of that gain is filtered out. So for me, it's not a matter of trying to set up 25 different, you know, guitar tones and presets and all this sort of thing. I just set up one sound that if I was all the way wide open, okay, I had my volume all the way up, my pickup selector all the way down, and I hit, that's that rock and roll distortion. Again, not metal, all the way throttled, and not completely clean, but in the center. And the rest of it is gonna be completely controlled by me. So this is full on. Maybe you'd want a little bit more gain, maybe a little less, but my point is, is that that's the maximum that I can go. So for the blue stuff that I'm gonna find myself in, I'm gonna wanna drop that back, so I lower my volume down. So now I start playing over something. But let's say now, I like what I've got going here, but it's a little bit too bright because again, for me, when I'm trying to play more mellow, I don't really stay on this bridge position. So that's where I might bump up into, let's go to, now I have three pickups, so I have five positions. This one is controlling this pickup right here. This is both of these. This is this one. This is both of those, and that's that one. So I'm gonna go into the third position just to kind of save some time here. So now I'm in this position. <laughs> Drop that back. Now listen to the difference. So it's warmed up a bit. It's got a bit more of this on it. A little bit more of that presence is gone. Now let's go to the fifth position, which is this pickup right here. Now we've got even less of that presence. See that? So now let me show you all three of those again. So now with those three voices, now I've got the two center ones, the two and four positions too, but let's just deal with what we've got here. So with those three positions, the, the first position, the third position, and the fifth position, I can decide which voicing seems to work best for the situation I'm in. And if I'm trying to be real singy, you know, real vocal. I tend to go to this fifth position or this third position. And that sounds really nice to me. Now, if at any time, if I need more, I can always turn that volume up and I'm going to get more, right? I'm going to push that line. But you have to understand that your touch and your tone create all of the dynamics that you have available to you. If you start your solo off maxed out on everything, right? You're in your bridge position, your volume's on 10, and you're playing. You don't have anywhere else to go as far as up goes, right? You can, you can bring your volume down, and maybe the song is, that's what you want in the song. You want to start off just full bore, right? And then break it down later. That's okay if that's your intention. If you're enjoying this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, go to guitarzoom.com. 
and consider becoming a premium member. There are three memberships to choose from. VIP, which gives you instant access to a library of short but powerful courses as well as new bite-sized lessons each month. There's also Play Songs that gives you step-by-step lessons so you can learn to play your favorite songs fast. And finally, there's Masterclass, university-level training on everything from soloing to music theory, from blues to home recording. For more info about these memberships and all the premium courses available to you, go to guitarzoom.com. Now back to the podcast. But if I was playing over something that's more mellow... You see, I can use the dynamics of the way I'm picking by picking softer and louder. And you'll always see me playing with this volume because I'm, I'm readjusting. Depending on what I want, what I hear coming next, you see. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn on just a little bit of delay and reverb. Now, sometimes I'll use a little bit more. Sometimes I'll use a little bit less. Um, you know, the reverb... I tend to have my delay set right around 660 milliseconds. And usually you can hear like one or two little delays and then it's gone. Now, the trick with the reverb and delay is that I don't want it to be... I don't want it to intrude on my original tone, right? So when I'm playing, I it should be in the background, okay? And you really should only notice it when I'm not playing. So as I... See, it gives some space, some weight in between the notes when I stop playing. So what it's really essentially doing then is creating this little cushion around the notes that I'm playing, which kind of encourages, encourages me, excuse me, encourages me to not play so much because I can stop playing and there's this little wash afterward that kind of fills that space, you see? I'm not using it as a crutch. I'm not using it to mask something that I'm doing. I'm using it to give me another little piece of leverage so when I stop playing, there's something there. Because the thing is, when you turn it off, when you have no delay or reverb at all, it's like, a, it's like you're hitting a brick wall when you play and you stop. Now, if you're doing something that, you know, and you want that clean, uh, you know, that dry sound, I think that's wonderful. Um, but there are times when you're trying to create this nice, melodic, beautiful solo. And if you don't have something that's kind of, kind of creating space around your notes, they just sound like they're dying. Like they, they literally just and they're gone. They're just kind of sucked into the black hole where if I have a little bit of reverb, you see, it gives me a little bit of, a little bit more uh, of that cushion and it encourages me to not play so much. Okay. So now I've got that reverb on. I'm in this middle position right here. And that sounds pretty nice, okay? Now if I wanted to bring it up, let's say it's a little bit further into the solo and I want to bring it up a little bit. So if I drop down to this pickup, to my bridge pickup, all the way up with my volume, See, and then I can drop back down again. So when I need that push, it's there. And I can always drop back. So setting up the proper tone to begin with, okay? And, and again, it's okay if you make a bunch of different kinds of sounds and things like that, but what I want you to start thinking about is the power of your volume and your pickup selector switch, if you have one. Again, you might only have one pickup, and that's okay. You can work with that, too. Um, but for me, I've always liked having three pickups because they all sound so different to me, and I tend to play 
Um, you know, when I'm up higher up on the fretboard, I tend to play more here in the neck position to kind of give it more of that woofy sound. <laughs> And as I move down here, I tend to go the opposite direction, so I'll go toward the middle, or again, if I need more rock and roll stuff. You know, then I'll, I'll move toward the bridge position or whatever. And this is just a suggestion for you to think about, but again, if you watch me play, you're going to notice I'm always adjusting these things because that's where the tone is coming from, and then the touch that I have on top of that, the, the firmness or the relaxed picking that I use is going to reflect that. So even if I had a little bit too much, and I backed off a little bit, but you're going to see me roll that off because I'm going to notice I have a little bit too much for that situation. So I'm going to back off. Okay. So that's how I use touch and tone uh, when I'm playing. Now, if I find myself in a hard rock or metal situation and I'm using more gain most of the time, then my 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 amp setting would be geared toward that, right? Um, and when I want something that's cleaner, I might, well, I might be able to back it off to, to all the way clean, um, but I might actually set up a patch or a preset that's more clean too and then move between the two. But what I like is all the subtle elements that I get without having to, to make that transition. I'm living in this one tonal space here. And getting all these sounds. You see? Now, I do have a distortion pedal here. So if I was to do this, now I'm over the top. But let's say I wanted that. I wanted to go into something where my solo really goes from here to here. So it gets really aggressive for a part of the song. Well, again, I had nowhere to go from here. This is with it off. Which sounds great, by the way. But if I... Now it's just, it's just over the top, right? But maybe that's what I'm looking for, for that one little section. And I take that off. And here I am again. So I'm not switching channels. I'm not doing all this stuff. I'm right in the center there and controlling everything from, from there. So as you try and jam with some of these tracks or whatever you might have, what I want you to start thinking about before you ever get started is getting to know your guitar a little bit better, getting to know the sounds that your guitar is capable of making in your bridge and your center and your neck positions if you have those. Again, if you only have two pickups, that's fine. Then you'll have three positions that you can work with and, and whatever. Um, but start getting comfortable with those sorts of things and the sounds that they can make. Now, the last thing I've got here is the tone. Now on this Silver Sky in particular, when I put it down in this bridge position pickup and turn the tone all the way up, it's fairly bright. But if I drop that tone back, I'm just dropping the, the tone control back just a little bit. You get this really nice sound. See how it becomes a bit thinner on that, that middle position pickup? See, so there's lots of room to play with here in the sounds that I'm creating. So again, take the time, learn about your guitar, learn about the, the options of things that you have on the guitar, not just turning everything all the way up and then going for it, right? Which can be fun. I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm just saying that there's a lot of room for a lot of things that you can do with your guitar. And just understand that your amp then is going to reflect what you're doing with that guitar. So what I like to do is I'll take my guitar, set it up for wide open, 
okay? And then set the amp how I like from there. And then I'll readjust all of my stuff here and then the, the touch that I'm using on top of that to get the different sounds. So um, learn to, to be more aware of all of these things and the options that you have because people will tell you, well, you need to own a Marshall and you need to own a Fender and you need to own a this and a that, whatever. I mean, you could own any of them and you can still get amazing tones out of any of that stuff. It doesn't matter how much money you spent or didn't spend on an amp. Um, it, it comes down to your ability to control those things from your guitar and the way that you pick, okay? So think about that a little bit when you, uh, when you start trying to work with some of these backing tracks and things. Next time on the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast. All right, moving on to our second jam. This one's gonna be in the key of A, so we're moving up. It's in A major. This is a straight groove, it's not a swing. So we're thinking one and two and da 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 dun 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 which is gonna, again, change the dynamic a little bit. It is just a 12 bar blues using A7 and D7 and E7. So the same rules are gonna apply, except now we're up in the key of A. So let's check this one out. Steve Stein here from GuitarZoom.com and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, can I ask you a favor? Please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. Your feedback means more to me than you'll ever know. And be sure to check out my YouTube channels where you'll find over 1,000 videos to help you with your guitar playing. Thanks again for listening. Stay positive, keep playing, and keep having fun. If you'd like some help with your guitar playing but you're not sure how to get started, go to GuitarZoom.com and look for the Help Me Choose survey. By answering a few simple questions, you'll get Steve's personal recommendation of the perfect course for you. All this and more is available for you at GuitarZoom.com.